Hello and welcome back to Kaiserreich. What the hell was going on here? I forget. Oh yeah, we got uh, the Kingdom of Romania rebelling over here. I'm actually just gonna open the war uh, screen to see what's going on. Current wars. Yeah, we got the Soviets. So oh, no, never mind uh, about that uh, Romanian revolt. <coughs> East Asian Indo-Chinese War. For once, going in favor of the of Germany East Asia. However, that might not last. Otherwise, nothing. Let's see. We've got 105 or 106 political power. We could replace our ministers because we will, of course, have no elections. This is a fascist or a pseudo-fascist um, government. I'm not quite sure how it manifests in uh, the Kaiserreich timeline, but Lapuan Like was um, kind of um, it was kind of like a, cl a clerical fascism, which uh, in many oh boy, which in many ways uh, is relating or it's kind of like um, it's Christian fascism, kind of or like. In many ways related to the, uh, yep, yep, mm -hmm. to the clerical fascism in, um, or clerical pseudo fascism, with uh, what's his face, uh, Francisco Franco, who, in my opinion, of course you may have your own, but in my opinion, according to, uh, or in my opinion, built based on the, um, the books by Roger Griffin, on fascism and the nature of fascism. Those are the two titles of the books. I don't think Francisco Franco is fascist, but I think there were fascists in his government. And he did ally with the fascists. Anyways, uh, the Second American Civil War. Those not... Yeah, I, I mean, we've seen this. Those not in the know. Uh, it might seem like a crisis in the United States came out of nowhere. This is a very meta comment, because this technically does come out of nowhere. A, an American Civil War like this would never happen, I don't think. I mean, kind of with um, Douglas MacArthur seizing the state apparatus, it becomes a little bit more understandable, but that has to happen before anything else. Like, nothing short of a military coup would cr uh, cause a, um, an American civil war in this period, I don't think. But this is obviously a concession that is made for gameplay reasons, so that the American player actually has something. And also, it keeps America out of um, Europe for a little bit longer, so that they don't basically decide the fate of Europe immediately, you know? Because they have absurd uh, amounts of resources, and then, you know, absurd um, industrial capacity, and, uh, and just absurd amounts of manpower, and just everything about America is absurd. Did I turn this up a lot? No, I did not. It's just, like, very audible. All right. Oh, we got uh, Pacific States uh, militias rising up uh, against MacArthur. No New England uh, uprising, which is surprising. I'm very excited to see how this goes, because in pretty much every single game I play, the Combined Syndicates of America just stomps everything. Would be nice to have uh, Huey Long, or even something radical like uh, Mr. Pelly, who I, you know, obviously, I, I despise for obvious reasons, but um, with uh, us being kind of uh, shady individuals, it would be to our benefit. Rise of the Mongol Empire. Can't get any more insane than that bullshit. Yeah. Uh, news and reliable sources of them are scarce in the vast plains of Mongolia, but it has recently come to light that the mad baron of Mongolia, Roman Ungern von Sternberg, has risen to a new heights and declared himself to be the successor to Genghis Khan. I pronounce it Genghis Khan because that is kind of like, or Genghis Khan. And more clo closely resembling the actual Mongolian translation, you in the Anglosphere would probably call it Genghis Khan. So Genghis Khan. In Norway, we call him Genghis Khan. Uh, appropriately named Ungen Khan. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. 
Oh, I love this bullshit here. So this hasn't been changed, but he's meant to be called Ungan Khan, not Genghis Khan II, because I think Ungan Khan is better. Uh, Alstom is done. Uh, the Peru-Bolivian Confederation has been restored. Glorious hats. Uh, it appears that an old idea has been reborn in South America. The original confederation between Peru and Bolivia, viewed by its many uh, regional enemies as a potential threat, was torn asunder by victorious Chile after the Battle of Yungu, uh, Yungay in 1939. Still, this new confederation could, unlike its predecessor, prove able to sustain itself in these unstable times in South America and the wider world. Observers both overseas and domestic have noted, however, that there are a number of key issues that must be worked out between La Paz and Lima, before this new pol polity can truly be called the United Nation. Alright. La Paz? Does that mean, uh, the peace or something? I don't know. I don't know anything about Spanish, but Paz sounds like peace. So which which one uh, removes the black uh, Black Monday bullshit? Oh, it's that one. Yeah, we just have to keep going this way. Finland is in a much better spot than Norway, I think, with uh, more territory to build in. Do we actually need this? Yeah, we do need this. We need uh, more military factories. We want to have at least four before we start constructing the forts against uh, Russia. So, someone did mention I need to check the, uh, the border to see that I don't actually have to defend that many provinces. Well, I do need to defend two provinces here. And then need to defend, uh, I, I think I did mention, like they mentioned the lakes as a reason that I might not have to defend that many provinces, but I think I mentioned that in the video as well. Uh, I do have to uh, defend two there, uh, four there, and this one, I think, right? Or is that a lake that divides it? Maybe actually, yeah, we might not need to make a, um, a fort there. And then four there. So it's still quite a lot of provinces. We do have an, enough of an army to defend that then in that case. Uh, but not to shore up this as well then. That's kind of a problem. The second international has been held. With, of course, the Norwegians as part of it. Oh, now they're doing, uh, yeah, forcing King Håkon to abdicate. Makes me sad. I mean, he is treated basically as a, like, he's venerated as a, a national hero in Norway. The fall of Denver. Pacific states have seized, yeah, territory from MacArthur. MacArthur could just never hold on to power. Just never works out. Yeah, so Lapua is... The Lapua movement actually originates from a town called Lapua, which is, like, the home of a... an arms manufactory. Probably do want to take this one. Uh, soft attack, breakthrough on both of those. They're ex exactly the same, but this one bears the name of our movement. And this one is potentially better. Holy shit! The army takes power in the Philippines. And the foundation of the Belgrade Pact. 
Serbia, Romania, and Greece. The three Balkan members of the Entente, all with revanchist views. Yeah, so they're they're forming the Belgrade Pact to contest Bulgaria and potentially the Ottoman Empire. Hopefully, the Balkans will not start another world war. It still looks like the Germany stations are going to win here. And in Philippines, the army took power, which means they have who? Basilio uh, something Valdez. Basilio Javier Valdez, maybe? Doesn't say. Juan? Who knows? The Austrian Empire has declared war on the Kingdom of Hungary. Not that uncommon. The 1937 Dutch elections. What have they led to this time? The VDB. Doesn't say what they're actually called, like full name. Social liberals, though. They are an extreme minority. Oh my god! The, the Dutch do love their elections, and the fall of Vienna. That was fast. Oh boy, is... Is this going to be a case of Hungary winning against Austria? I don't think I've seen that before. The Peru-Bolivian uh, Confederation declared war on Ecuador. My dude looks airbrushed to a whole to all to hell like this man this is his instagram photo isidro ayora uh, Isidro, Isid Isidro, you don't have to do this to your photos you look beautiful just the way you are kingdom of serbia has declared war in bulgaria and there it is, the Fourth Balkan War. We're gonna want um, hydrophones. I think. Wait, hydrophones. Uh, hold on a second. They only help. According to the description, at least, they only help the. Um, huh. The ability to detect submarines. I mean, you don't need that. At all. So, uh, a hydrophone is actually an essential part of, um, of a submarine. Because you use it to passively detect enemy ships that are, are uh, passing over you, or detect shipping at range. It's a good way of like actually getting to know what's going on around you without actually alerting the enemy to your presence. So, for example, if you're being pursued by a destroyer, you want to d dive deep, and then you want to get on the hydrophone. And you want to listen. What you uh, can do in a submarine is... Uh, Actually, listen on the hydrophone because it's it's quite um, sensitive. Listen for if the waters are calm, that is, for the destroyer when you hear them drop the depth charges, and in that case, when you hear that, fucking slam uh, the throttle and dodge and weave. Sometimes the depth charge exploding will be enough to cover the sound of your engine, so you can potentially move a bit and get out of their way. Let that be my soft announcement that at some point in the future I am going to cover Silent Hunter 5 with a lot of mods on this channel. It's a really good um, U-boat simulation, World War II U-boat simulation. I think you're going to find it very interesting. And we can probably do a lot of like... Um, I mean, a, a bunch of like simulatory bullshit, like stuff that, you know, people don't really care about, but we can uh, have our little, you know, fun with uh, with history there. 
you know, like, yeah, de de decrypting Enigma messages and stuff. Do we want tanks? We I want tanks, but we don't need, like, we're not gonna have any use. Goddamn. I have nothing to research, please. Give me something to research. Oh, this is so trash. Like, I, I can research stuff, obviously, but I don't need any of it. Maybe this. Yeah, fuck it. We want uh, synthetic oil experiments. We have a lot of things to deal with here. Nicaragua and the Socialist Republic of Hondur Honduras have signed a peace deal. All right. Fall of Moscow. Situation in Soviet Russia appears dire indeed. Yes, it does. The Red Square has been turned into a makeshift prisoner of war camp. <laughs> Long the center of the Soviet life in the city. Yeah, this isn't really true, though, because this was a Soviet revolt, so the Red Square wouldn't really have the same connotations. Saudi Arabia has joined the Cairo Pact, the pact against the Ottoman Empire. Okay, so we've got one. Uh, we've got a couple more of these to go. I'm recording these episodes, uh, which are going to go up tomorrow, so I'm recording them the day before, that meaning the uh, 25th on the Friday, uh, because I might be very busy to- <clears throat> uh, I'm going to visit a military base where I might be able to uh, see an F-35, like the new uh, new NATO, um, NATO jet fighter, like the Sandu jet fighter. And if they allow us to take pictures, I might post a couple of pictures on Twitter, so stay tuned for that. You can find my Twitter in the link in the descri description if you're interested. Mexico has joined the Third International, but yeah, I might uh, post some uh, pictures to Twitter if I get some cool ones. They, they're not only going to have the F-35 there, they're also going to have a P-51, and uh, possibly a Spitfire, and a they're going to have vampires, like the... Uh, the British planes that were not really employed in World War II, but were designed. Uh, they're very strange. They're like, I think they're heavy fighters. They have, um... Uh, they have, like, uh, this... a uh, conjoined tail uh, uh, section, which is kind of cool. They look like something out of Crimson Skies, kind of. Uh, that old game. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of old planes there, which I might be able to uh, snap a couple of pictures of. If so, they'll be on, t on the Twitter, if they're good. Most looking forward to the P-51 uh, Mustang and the... Uh, the um, F-35s though, because I've never seen an F-35 in my life. Savoyard crisis resolved. Syndicalism spreads. And syndicalism spreads to Burma as well. Union of Burma has joined the Eastern Syndicalist Union. Whoa! That I don't know if I've seen before. I kind of just assumed Baratya Commune was going to leave that, but yeah. Song about Berlin. Yeah, we're gonna go with this one. It does give more of fuel from refineries, and we're gonna build a couple of those, I think. Because we're not gonna have any source of oil up here. I 
And being a national populist, you generally don't have any natural allies. Did you call him natural populist? I meant to say national populist if I said it wrong. Um, I don't know which one of these we're going to go with. Turks on Khan declared war on the Alash Order. It might be... Yeah, I don't know which one. Probably this one. The, the attack is good as well. But army experience gain is also really good because you lose that when you um, uh, when you take losses. And then, you know, the losses sort of compound themselves. Like, if you lose a lot of men, then you go to green for the uh, army experience. Then you're going to take even more losses. Let's go with uh, Carl Gustav Mannerheim, who we denied earlier, uh, just so we can do the fort constructions uh, a bit faster once this is done. Totalists in the Baratir commune. Indeed. Okay, so we've done the University of Helsinki, and now we will do... Oops, see they see. Financial strength. Finland has finally taken its rightful, rightful place. Rising out of the ashes of Black Monday, we can now look upon the world in a position of safety. A position whereby we possess what may, uh, many do not. Financial strength. I wouldn't go that far yet. We're getting there. Tripolitania has joined the Cairo Pact. We're gonna get bonuses to this earlier or later on, but um because let's see here. For the army doctrine stuff. We can go with bombard the enemy, or we can go with retain the old doctrines, but I think we're gonna go with bombard the enemy. Yeah, research speed. We can get arms from Germany. But yeah, if we um We have to work with German officers if we go this way, and we can't really do that. Yeah, we can't even do that, this, so yeah, we're gonna go with that one anyway, so... I uh, will, uh, do this, because we're gonna get a bonus to that anyways, later on, so we can do the other one faster. Oh yeah, of course, Hungary was not gonna win that war. An uprising up here by syndicalist militias. Not uh, all that unusual. It's really cool that, so since New England didn't rise up, uh, Douglas, Douglas MacArthur has a small smidgen of a chance because he can hold a, a very narrow frontier and he has a lot of industry over here and manpower compared to the garbage that is kind of like the, um, the Midwest here. Don't hope, I hope nobody's going to be offended by me saying that, but uh, I wouldn't worry about it. Nobody lives there anyway, so nobody's going to watch it and be offended. Uh, from the Midwest, at least. Nepal declared war on the Bharati commune. I wonder, is, um, <laughs> is this part of the Midwest? I hope not, because people do live here. I'm halfway joking. I never like doing ahead of time penalty stuff, but we don't really need anything else, so I might as well. Financial strength is done. Black Monday effects should be gone. And now it is time for us to start going down the political tree so we can get foreign policy. 
and so we can start getting ready to go to war. The Dominion of India took three states. So we are uh, approaching the end of the video, so I'm going to do a quick casualty report. So this war has been going on for not too long, but not enough losses for me to be happy. I want a lot of losses for the Americans in general, because the Americans, no matter what side they're on, are scary. Oh my god. The Qing have taken 449,000 against the uh, Shangjing Zhangguo. Uh, so they're 70k. What the fuck? He's fighting hard. Brotherhood. Please be my brother. I want to have these national populists on my side. Um... Second Russian Civil War is almost over with a million losses from uh, the Soviets. 700,000 for the Republic. Bulgaria, 224,000 in the Serbian-Bulgarian War, the Belgrade Pact War. Was there not a third part of this war? There was, wasn't there? Or part of this pact. It was Romania. Wasn't it? I guess they are a tentative sort of um, associate of the Alliance. Alright, well, that's about it. Uh, so, at the closing of this video, since we are ending a little bit early, because the casualty report did take a lot uh, less time than I thought it would, uh, I'm again just going to remind you that um, on my Twitter, tomorrow, Meaning today, when this video goes up, basically, you might see some cool pictures of some old-ass airplanes and some interesting World War II and Cold War World uh, Cold War aero, like aeronautics history and stuff. Uh, also, uh, you will find in the description down below a link to my Patreon, a Humble Bundle uh, associate or partner uh, referral link where you could buy Hotspun 4 or its expansion. You can use it yourself or link it to a friend or whatever, uh, and it will support the channel at no extra cost to you. It'll also support a charity. I've chosen Wikipedia as the charity to support, but you can change it to whatever you want. I am a very big fan of what Wikipedia does, and I think it's very important, especially uh, for internet debates, which a lot of people get into. And without it, we would be lost in conjecture. Other than that, um, for the future, Obviously, these, you know, these videos are going to keep going, but I have got a bunch of stuff lined up, which you might start seeing in the near future. Uh, that isn't Hearts of Iron 4, which I think some of you might like. Uh, but for Hearts of Iron 4 itself, I'm going to need some help. Uh, so if you've watched uh, to the end of this video, you are probably one of the people who are more engaged in the content. So I'm going to need some help with figuring out which nation I'm going to be playing later on after finishing either Norway or Finland. I'm not going to need the answer right now, but I want you to think about it. And when the time comes, I'm probably going to make a poll on Twitter, because that's kind of a nice way or nice place to do it. Uh, so, um, look for that there. I'll announce it when it happens. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.